Hi, in this video I will introduce energy levels and explain why line spectra occur. As you may recall from chemistry, electrons surround an atom in discrete shells, each with a maximum number of electrons. The first shell holds two, the second eight, and so on. The electrons in each shell have got a particular energy. In physics, it's usually easier to represent these shells as lines. The lowest energy level we call the ground state. In my previous video about ionization and excitation, I explained how passing a current through a gas at certain voltages can provide electrons with exactly the energy they need to jump from one energy level to another. Go back and watch that if you need a reminder. Note that this is not the only way that electrons can be excited. It is also possible to excite electrons by passing electromagnetic radiation, light, through the gas. However, these photons must have precisely the excitation energy for this to occur. Too little energy or too much energy and the photon will just pass straight through unaffected. So what happens next? If an electron has moved up to a higher energy level, it has left a space behind in its old shell. This space will quickly be filled by an electron from the higher energy level dropping back down. What's the problem with this? Well, to drop down an energy level, the electron will need to lose energy. So it emits a photon with an energy precisely equal to th the difference between these two energy levels. This can be written as HF, the energy of a photon, is equal to E1, that is the energy level where it starts, take away E2, the energy level where it ends. Because each element has got particular energy levels, it follows that there are only limited photon energies that can be produced for that element. This is why when we view a gas discharge lamp, such as this mercury lamp, through a diffraction grating, we don't see a full spectrum, a rainbow. Instead, we see bright lines at particular frequencies. This is called a line spectrum. One important point to note is that electrons raised to higher energy levels do not have to return to the ground state in a single jump. Instead, they can stop at other energy levels on the way down, meaning that several lower energy photons may be emitted instead of one high energy photon. If you'd like to understand more about line spectra, please check out my video on that topic. Let's end with an example. An electric current is passed through mercury vapour. Mercury atoms have several possible energy levels. The first three are at 4.67 electron volts, 4.89 electron volts and 5.46 electron volts relative to the ground state which we're saying is zero here. If a potential difference of 5.46 volts is applied across the tube, how many different photon energies may be emitted? And two, what is the maximum wavelength of photon that can be emitted? Well first, if 5.46 volts is applied to the tube, it means that each conduction electron is provided with 5.46 electron volts of energy, so the atomic electrons they collide with will be excited to an energy level of 5.46 volts. First, let's work out how many possible ways there are for an electron to drop from 5.46 electron volts back to the ground state. Well it could go from 5.46 straight the way back down to the ground state, it could go from 5.46 to 4.89, from 4.89 to 4.67, and then from 4.67 back to the ground state, or it could go from 5.46 to 4.67 and then from 4.67 down to ground, or from 5.46 to 4.89 and then 4.89 all the way down to the ground state. So this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six possible photon energies that can be emitted. How can we answer the second part of the question? Well, since E equals HC over lambda, where lambda is the wavelength, and we're looking for the maximum wavelength, it follows that we should be looking for the smallest possible energy transition. Now looking at our diagram, which is not to scale, but we can see that the smallest possible transition of the six that we've drawn in our diagram is from 4.89 to 4.67. 
So using our equation HF, photon energy, equals E1 take away E2, we can find that the minimum photon energy that can be produced in this situation is 4.89 take away 4.67 which is 0 0.22 electron volts. Now we need to convert that into joules so that's going to be 0 0.22 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 which gives us a photon energy in joules of 3.52 times 10 to the power of minus 20. Finally, we know that this photon energy can also be written as hc over lambda. So therefore, lambda is going to be hc divided by our photon energy, which we've been writing as hf. So h, the Planck constant, 6.63 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 34 multiplied by the speed of light in a vacuum 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 divided by our photon energy which we've worked out to be 3.52 times 10 to the power of minus 20 joules and this gives us a maximum wavelength of 5.65 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meters or 5.65 micrometers.